It sounds like, and we're still reporting this out, and there are many questions about the process simply because we have not really faced a precedent for this, and the law that exists to govern the certification process is a little bit vague in some key areas. But we potentially expect to see dozens of your colleagues in the House uh, be willing to object uh, to the results of the presidential election to specific states, to challenge the results, to speak on the floor challenging the results. What do you say to them about what impact that has on our democracy? You know, politically, and again, thanks for having me, politically for them, it might be great for their base, for their fundraising, uh, for things like that. But nationally, it's horrific. And I think that I find it amazing that right now we have Republicans that are actually objecting to federalism and wanting sort of this overthrow or this, you know, sort of let's throw out the electoral voters, uh, let's ignore the states who have already litigated this and let's move forward. And the only thing I could say is it's nuts. Uh, it's, it doesn't make any sense right now unless it's about fundraising for a specific base. Uh, they're looking to go forward politically somewhere, uh, whether they want to be favor the president over the next four years. But really, it's it's all of this is based on disinformation and conspiracy theories. And I think that's what bothers me is that they're throwing away federalism, throwing away what makes this country great, which is the ability for the states to choose who they want to represent them, all from really a baseline of disinformation and ridiculousness. And I think I've been screaming out about this for a few months, as you know, and I would say, stop. Um, when does a scam become a coup? And I think that's what we have to start talking about is when do, when do we actually have fantasy uh, dictating what we're talking about as parties or as free thinking individuals. And I think it's a frightening prospect for them to continue down this road. Were you surprised that Senator Josh Hawley was willing to join in on this? And, and how do you view that? Is it a critical moment uh, for our country in this fight generally? Or uh, I mean, what, what's your what's your take on his willingness to go along with your colleagues in the House? I think he must have talked to some individuals who thought that his fundraising could go much higher if he were to do something like this. And there's three facets to this. You know, when you look at disinformation, number one, this is the ultimate self-licking ice cream cone. You inject disinformation uh, into the constituents and then use that disinformation as a rationalization uh, to protest this. It's it's unbelievable. And it's how disinformation works, right? It's, it's a self-licking ice cream cone. Number two, fundraising. A lot of people are fundraising off of fantasy. And it comes a time you have to get more and more provocative to raise those funds. The thing is that that provocative nature can actually cause radicalism and people to act on this thinking that it's true when it's not. And third, it seems to me that Josh Hawley is looking for a higher office. Maybe he's positioning for 2024. This is all just political. It has nothing to do on rule of law. It has nothing to do on what's good for this country. It, ha it has to do with what's good for the individual. And that's the problem that we have with elected officials today is that it, it seems to be true now. That's really about Twitter followers or swaging the Twitter mobs or swaging a certain specific part of your electorate instead of doing what's right, and that's serving your country based on the Constitution. And again, I think that's why people are tired of career politicians and tired of the ridiculous tripe you see from Senator Hawley saying he's going to come out against this election uh, on states that have already decided. I mean, it's just it's anti-federalism, and, and I, I think it's what uh, Republicans are not for. So it is interesting to me that we're looking at a federal takeover of the elections when we stand against those federal takeover elections as soon as 2018, I mean, the uh, first vote in 2019 and H.R. 1. It's just, it doesn't make any sense to me. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel. So thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC and get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.